everyone, and welcome to Plaid's AMA about Wallet on Board. This is our first Discord AMA event. So very fitting and happy that it's about crypto and some of the crypto products that we're building. And like I mentioned, today we're going to be talking about Wallet on Board, which is a product we announced uh, maybe a, a week or two ago. And Wallet on Board lets you, as a, as a product or, or app developer, integrate hundreds of self-custody crypto wallets with one integration and get ongoing automatic updates without you having to manage libraries or, or do anything else. Um, so, you know, I'm really excited to talk about this today. Uh, first, we're going to talk a little bit about why we built it and some of the problems you might have if you were to build something like this yourself. I will show briefly how to integrate Wallet on board with just a, a few lines of code. Uh, and then we'll talk about some use cases that we're seeing for it and maybe uh, inspire you and, and you know, show you how you can use it within your products. First, let's talk about uh, wallets and how we think about wallets in Plaid and how uh, you might benefit from thinking about wallets as well within your products. So crypto wallets at their core store a, a private key, which is a, a you know, large, special, random number. Uh, and then let users sign messages with it. So you, you know, it might not be intuitive if you haven't thought about it quite like this, but uh, blockchains uh, store your data, not your wallets. You, know, you might see you know, holdings or, or NFTs or something in the wallets that you use, um, but your wallets aren't actually storing those. Your wallets authenticate access to the data that is stored on the blockchain. Um, and that's really important because if you if your wallet is not securely storing or managing that private key and someone else gets that private key, they can actually uh, use your assets uh, on chain and send them to places you might not want them to be sent. Um, on top of that core, which is you know pretty much universal for all blockchains, um, then wallets will build different UX, different uh, APIs, and maybe blockchain specific functionality on top of that. But that core is very common and, and universal for all wallets. So if you're able to sign messages, you can move those things around on chain to different locations and, and different storage. Uh, your wallet doesn't quite store those things itself. It just allows you to authenticate access. Um, but that, that's like the really core kind of mental model we have for wallets and blockchains. Uh, and on top of that, wallets, of course, do lots of other interesting things too. They will actually show you your NFTs. They will show you your tokens. Uh, different blockchains have different functionality. You know, Bitcoin is different than Ethereum, which is slightly different than Solana, all that sort of stuff. But the, the real core to think about is that wallets manage that private key. Um, so some examples of, of wallets that you probably have, have seen in the wild or might use yourself. You know, there's MetaMask, there's Harbor wallets like Ledger, there's Coinbase wallet, there's something called Coinbase MPC. And one thing you'll notice for each of these kind of brands of wallets there's actually different uh, like apps and different software that they that they allow you to, to manage your, your private key and, and be a wallet. So you know MetaMask and Coinbase Wallet have mobile apps. They also have browser plugins. Uh, Ledger has like a, a desktop software, also has mobile apps. It has, I think, browser plugins. Coinbase MPC, their wallet that's in the normal Coinbase app, is only available as a browser plugin within the Coinbase mobile app. So even though there are there are lots of lots of choice, which is great. Um, but if you're a developer and you're trying to figure out how do you connect these various wallets to your, your app and product that you're building, there's actually a lot of complexity there, both technically and in terms of the user experience. Um, and so on that technical front, all these wallets, what makes them really special and what makes Web3 special is the fact that the wallets expose APIs. So you can build your product and have it interoperate with these wallets um, and generally, you know, there's, there's different APIs for every blockchain and also it turns out different APIs for every wallet. But at a high level, these APIs allow you to get the public address of the user or request them from the user really because it's permissioned, um, as well as request the user to sign messages. So this can be for transactions of, of moving a balance from one address to another, it could be interacting with a smart contract if you're working with a blockchain that has smart contracts. It could also just be signing messages for authentication purposes, which we'll go into later. This is a really special part, again, about Web3 and, and wallets is the wallet's trying to manage this, this private key, they let users sign messages with it, and then they expose APIs to developers to actually interoperate with their products. And, and that's, that's pretty, pretty, again, special and, and unique. But it turns out all these APIs are, are very different and the UX that you need is very different. I'll kind of walk through some examples briefly because this is uh, kind of leads into why we're building Wallet on board. 
you can imagine that if you're you're building a, a desktop website, your users could have a, a mobile wallet like MetaMask, Coinbase Wallet. There's hundreds of other ones too. Um, there are some protocols like Wallet Connect that allow you to interface over WebSockets, but some wallets have their own protocols like Coinbase Wallet, My Either Wallet. There's a few others as well. Um, and so how you both build to that as a developer, how you show that to your users in terms of the UX is going to be a little bit different versus if you're on a desktop web app talking to a desktop browser plugin. Uh, you can also detect these browser plugins. You can, uh, you know, they don't even actually uh, inject into the same variable for a, a browser plugin as well. So some wallets will do window.ethereum, some wallets will do window.gamestop, there, there's some others uh, as well. And finally, you could have a, a mobile web app talking to a mobile wallet. So if someone could be on mobile Safari or mobile Chrome, they want to use your dApp with MetaMask or Coinbase wallet on their, on their device. And how those work is actually different as well. It's a different protocol, different user experience. And sometimes some of those mobile wallets only support working within their you know, in, in-app browser wallet like Coinbase and BC. So all kinds of complexities here. Uh, and you could go build this yourself. You could go figure out all these differences, keep them up to date as new wallets uh, arrive and new protocols arrive. Or you could use Wallet Onboard. And so that's, you know, that's, that's why we built Wallet Onboard is we saw all these differences across all these wallets, all the technologies and how they're constantly evolving. And the, the way we've built, oops, did my screen share go away? No. Uh, the way that we've built Wallet Onboard is pretty special where it'll actually automatically update with these new changes all the time. So uh, we, we sort of push out new updates for, for new supported wallets, for new supported protocols. You don't have to manage library versions or stay up to date yourself. You just integrate once and you have ongoing uh, best connectivity to different wallets. On top of that, we uh, Plaid ourselves does not collect any addresses or wallet data as part of linking your wallet through Wallet Onboard. Um, so we don't see the address. We can't infer anything about it. Uh, we try to really try to preserve the privacy of users who go through this experience, especially in crypto. Um, we also have some nice kind of developer features where you know, we can uh, make sure that users are on a certain chain. If you're using different Ethereum chains like Polygon, that will take even more work for you to do as a developer if you wanted to assert something like that and handle the differences of that experience across wallets. And so we're starting to add more features and kind of quality of life improvements for you as a developer. Um, so that was a, a high level like overview of how we think about wallets and, and what Wallet Onboard brings to the table. But I think you know, just seeing the code itself will also give you a sense of how easy it is to, to start using Wallet Onboard and get a lot of those benefits out of the box. So I'll briefly walk through how you might do this, how, how your app or product might be connecting to wallets today, um, and some of the trade-offs and, and difficulties you'll run into doing that. So first, you know, a lot of people might start projects or products by connecting only to browser plugin wallets. And we see this a lot too, where, where different apps will only interface with browser plugin wallets. Um, you'll have to see if there's one of these installed. Uh, then you'll have to request the accounts from the user. Uh, and one thing you'll notice off the bat I, that I kind of mentioned earlier is not every browser plugin wallet is going to use Wino.Ethereum. Unfortunately, not every browser plugin wallet is also not going to use this specific API to request accounts. There might be some differences. Uh, if you're trying to handle certain error codes, the error codes actually are subtly different between different wallets, which is, again, a lot of complexity that we end up solving for in Wallet Onboard. Um, and if you need to manage what chains your users are on, if you really need them to be on you know, Polygon Mainnet or, or Avalanche or a different sort of uh, you know, L2 Ethereum chain, you'll have to go and, and manage that yourself. And I kind of wrote some, some code here, but uh, this also heavily differs between wallets. Some wallets don't support automatic chain switching. Some don't support automatic wallet, uh, automatic chain addition, all sorts of differences. And then, you know, so this is kind of the, the code you might write to do this yourself. Uh, and this is incomplete. This doesn't really work. This only works for browser plugin wallets. It doesn't work for other kind of, you know, wallets like uh, mobile app wallets, et cetera. So you'll have to write even more code to make this really robust for your product. So instead, what you can do is integrate Plaid Wallet Onboard. At a high level, all you need to do is add our script, configure some APIs, open it, and then use the connection to your wallet. We'll kind of walk through that really quick. Uh, first, you drop in our JavaScript snippet. 
Uh, this is using Link, which is Plaid's general SDK uh, that we have shipped to millions of consumers in the most popular crypto exchanges and fintech apps. And you might have seen this yourself if you've used other products as well. Um, so we're, we try to build that into our, the same SDK and infrastructure that is tried and true and, and works at a pretty high scale. I'll walk through the API you need in plain JavaScript. So you don't need to use React or any specific framework to use Wallet on board. You can just use normal JavaScript, which is what we're doing here. Um, so first, what you do is uh, our script injects a, a variable called window.plaid. You call .web3, you await it. We load some extra code needed to do a lot of the, the wallet things that we that we do for wallet on board. When that's ready, you just call dot Ethereum, create Ethereum onboarding. You give it a token, which is sort of like your API key uh, to, to use this product. You can figure what your default chain will be for your for your DAP. So if you need your users to be on mainnet or maybe a testnet or, or something else, you can configure that here and we'll make sure that the users are actually switched to the right chain before any operations happen further on. And you give it some callbacks. Uh, when the user connects their wallet, you get that on success callback and you can pass that into whatever code your DAP is doing. Uh, or you get an on exit callback, which is if someone quits out of the process or can't connect their wallet. And then you open it, and, and that's it. So you know probably in the same or less code than you would do uh, yourself, as we saw earlier, you actually get support for many more wallets, many more protocols. You'll get ongoing updates as well. So as we add in new optimizations, new wallets, um, and this is going to also paper over differences between different wallets, even if they're using the same protocol or technology under the hood. Um, so really, in a, in a pretty quick migration, you really up-level your user experience and your conversion. Uh, and that's, that's what we really care about doing with Wallet Onboard. We also have some additional features, too. So if you need to reuse existing connections, if someone goes through your flow and you want to resume that wallet connection in the future, we expose APIs for that as well. Uh, and we're working on other APIs in the, as well uh, in the future to more, more quality of life improvements for developers. That was kind of a rolling tour of you know, why we built Wallet on board, how you actually use it. I want to walk through some use cases and, and so you can kind of see what people are, are using this for today. Um, and maybe give you some inspiration if you don't already have a use case in mind. Um, so Clubhouse uses Wallet on board for uh, a token gated experience. So if you want to join a like audio chat room in, in Clubhouse and you want to gate the members and access to that based on tokens, uh, you can actually connect your wallet through wallet on board in Clubhouse. And then they you know, read what data you have in your wallet and then use that in their token dating experience. You could also use this in token minting. If you want to, are building like a token minting product, you can uh, connect wallets through wallet on board in order to mint tokens. Uh, we have a couple of customers using wallet on board for you know, sort of maybe wallet insights or wallet finance management. So 2.5 is one of them and Zerion is another one where they should show like finance management sort of aspects of, of wallets. You can also use this for what we call like payouts and transfers. So if you're maybe a like a custodian of, of various crypto holdings, whether it's NFTs or, or other tokens, and you would actually disperse those to addresses, um, a lot of times what, you, what people do right now is you copy paste an address into a, into a box. It can be fraught with errors, you can have a typo, uh, maybe you also want to verify that the person who's entering that address has access to that address through authentication. So you can actually use Wallet on board for all of those things. And briefly, I also mentioned authentication. Um, um, a lot of you know, products are using you know, sign in with your wallet as a means to, to authenticate users in general, you know, as an alternative to sign in with an email address or, or Facebook login or Google login. Um, so that's another use case for connecting wallets and then signing messages that aren't used for transaction purposes. So if you don't already have a use case in mind, there's a lot of stuff you can use Wallet on board for, which is pretty exciting. So that was our rolling tour, again, of why we built Wallet on board, how you integrate it, and maybe some use cases that'll get your brain started. So you know, I'm here, the rest of the Applied team is here. I'm happy to answer questions.